of the Minority Voices here on WYDO Fox 14. Good morning. Well, do we have something in store for you? Hey, before we get started, we want to remind you about the Young Boys newspaper. Pick up your copy right away. What you read is what you know and say. What you see is what you get. It's the Young Boys newspaper for the last 10 years. All right. Serving Eastern North Carolina. <laughs> Had to get that plug in there. All right, I'm my brother Hayward Johnson sitting in for Mr. Jim Ross on this wonderful Sunday. God has blessed us with another Sunday uh, to come together. And uh, we have a panel of kids here today from the schools here in Pitt County. And my co-host today, uh, Captain Cecil Hardy of the Greenville Police Department here in Greenville, North Carolina. And then uh, we're going to be talking about the 1997 Black Team Leadership Summit. But first of all, before we get the show started, we got some cheerleaders here in the house. And uh, they're from, what school are you ladies from? EBA Cup. EBA Cup. All right. We want them to give us a small demonstration of what they do when they go to those basketball games and football games. All right. <laughs> Come on, ladies. On the count of three. One, two, three. Change 
and, and, and give out new direction in life. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Anybody else want to follow what she said? I'm mm -hmm. here on the end. Mr. Cancer. Black Leadership Council will be Mr. William Turner from Wachovia Bank, a member of the Alpha, Alpha side here in Greenville. And these are his concerns that he would like to see brought up at the uh, Leadership Summit. One would be my concerns is leadership development and goal setting. Are all youth prepared to be leaders of the future? How do we effectively prepare our youth for the future? Stress the importance of goal setting. Is everyone around the table uh, familiar with goal setting? Well then, the goal that you set is the, 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 is the object of the direction you're taking. To get to that goal, you have to have objectives, and the objectives are the things you have to do to get there. So when you come around the table, I'd each one of you to tell me pretty much as much as you can, I know you're pretty young, what is your goal and how you intend to get there. Most young people you find don't realize that to have a goal, you have to have objectives. The objectives are those things that if you're going to run a 100-yard dash and you got hurdles between you, every time you clear a jump over a hurdle, that's an objective. And that's exactly what objective is. I'd like to go back to Mr. Council again. And can you tell me again how you intend to uh, accomplish that goal? Um, I think I'm going to first I'm gonna try to keep my grades up, stay active, and go to college, do, do well there, uh, maybe get my master's degree. Just try to help the community. That's, that's my main goal. Just try to give back to the community. Hello, thank you. That, that's excellent. That is marvelous. I like to hear that coming from a young person, especially. All right, do any of you have any questions to us adults around the table? Uh, perhaps some things that we could do to make your future better or help you to obtain those goals that you want to uh, obtain and to help you over the hurdles that you might be faced with in life. Any questions at all with, to any other adults here? Um, more activities around for the kids, for the kids out here. Um, for like the projects and stuff, more activities going around so we have the grown-ups could like get together and have things going out with us. Absolutely, like reaching out more to you, not only our own children, but uh, you know, all of the children in the entire community. Is that what you were saying? Yes. Absolutely, that's marvelous. We absolutely need to do that. Uh, do you have any questions uh, to any of the adults? Here. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe why are y'all like getting this, getting this thing together for us? Okay, who is that question I refer to? Ms. Apech or Ms. Harper? Mm -hmm. All right, basically, we feel like you all are our future there for
So what could we do to help uh, curtail the violence in the community? Let's direct, let's direct question to any of the ladies. <coughs> what would you change in your community? Anyway, go ahead. Say that again. Be more community watch. You think that uh, brothers and sisters, neighbors need to watch each other back. What about the lady to your uh, left? Put your hands down. We can see your Go ahead. Lady next to you. Mostly, or immediately to you, Dr. So that goes back to your other part of this question. More activity in the neighborhood for the children. Absolutely. Positive activities. Uh, Morgan, what do you think? Yeah. 
bless us with, to gather together here in unity with our young people of the Pitt County community. And uh, we left, before we went to our break, we were uh, discussing activities that could be brought into the community for the betterment of our youth. Uh, but before we go any further, we need to remind you about the MOS newspaper. Pick up your copy. It's hot off the press. What you see is what you get. What you read is what you know and say. It's the MOS newspaper for the last 10 years serving Eastern North Carolina. Get your copy today. Okay, Captain Mike, uh, do you have any input on the uh, issue that Randy brought up a while ago additionally about activities that we could bring to? Well, um, some short term things is that WOW, the Greenway Housing Authority, have all uh, held uh, fun days in which they had either dancing or food or games and stuff in the street. And these things uh, work pretty much uh, for a day. Um, we need more involvement from the entire community, from the business sector, from the institutions around here to get involved with some homegrown programs, especially during the summer, what this young lady said here about uh, having something to do. What opposite is not having something to do, and, and that's how you get in trouble. Um, uh, we have a few other people here who I would like to uh, pose that question to. Just Diana Apache has some interesting ideas on what to do with this kind of these kind of programs. Apache. Thank you, Captain Hunt. Um, my primary focus and concern um, in the summit is to um, provide a job fair. Um, I believe it is absolutely essential that I will be employed this summer. I have contacted um, almost um, 100 potential job fair um, participants. The response is absolutely overwhelming, and I really believe that we can get a large majority of our teams hired this, um, this summer through this job fair alone. And I really encourage you, teams, Come on down to the job fair, fill out applications. Um, it's, there, there's nothing like having your own. Um, mama may have, papa may have, but God bless the child who has his own. Come on down to the job fair, get a job for some. Amen. Well, Captain Marty, from your experience as a police officer uh, in years of time and jobs, when young people are able to work, uh, does that uh, eliminate some of the crime problem in the communities? Yes, uh, most times um, when children get in trouble, it's not because they don't have or they're trying to equal up to another person in some way. And a child that has a job, that has so a stable family, tend not to get in trouble. Uh, we can't deny those facts. That, that makes it a little hard on the single family, uh, single parent families, but you know, those are the, the principles that exist. Children with jobs and their families don't get in trouble for them. Would you encourage these young ladies and young men to now prepare for something that they want to do in the future when it comes to job wise? Yes. The other option, uh, the other part of that formula is that uh, most people get in trouble, young uh, adults and adults get in trouble because of hopelessness. And another thing you find is people who get in trouble don't seem to have a plan, don't seem to have a goal. Uh, what Shemday here says, what was just so valuable, and that you know, if you give them something to do, they have something to look at. Mm -hmm. And and um, and I, and I feel, and everything we do, it tends to show what this person had a vision or not. I think, and, and the Bible says that person without a vision perishes, mm -hmm. and that's true. Mm -hmm. We also want to uh, let young uh, the young folk, uh, young ladies from King I I was born and raised grew up in the projects and. There's nothing wrong with living in the projects. We all came from the projects, so that's our home, and we need to be encouraged. Of it. So don't don't say it in a negative way. Let's be positive wherever we live. Okay, here in the black community, we have the projects, the slums <coughs> around the country. God has blessed us here on this earth, so we got we need each other. You know? Another overwhelming facet of that formula that gets people in trouble or gets people into success is having again and having a master plan. And, and uh, just not having the I want it now syndrome. And uh, we have Miss uh, Angela Wilson from Nation Bank here today who has some ideas on how to conquer that. She will be at the summit. And Miss Wilson, could you give us a few words, please? Sure. Thank you, Dr. Hart. Um, how many of you in the bank? What do you think I do? Somebody give me an idea. What do you think I do all day long? I'm a banker. You think I 
account money. Okay, what else do you think I do? Run errands. I run errands? Okay, account money and run errands. What else? Secretary. My secretary. Okay, I do neither, neither of those. I'm a loan officer. I open accounts, I open check accounts, savings accounts, CDs, IRAs. That's a popular misconception among most black youth that the only thing you can do with a bank is count money. That's not true. You can do whatever you want to do. I don't even touch the money. Don't want to touch the money. <laughs> okay. But um, I mean, there's so many opportunities in a bank. You think, you know, if you work in a bank, you gotta be a teller, but that's not true. I mean, I make loans, personal loans, mortgage loans, and savings is important. That's something else that a lot of you can get into. All of you get allowance. Why not put half of that allowance away towards a savings account? By the time you turn 18, you have money in that. I mean, you have some money you can go to college, college with, or you don't have to ask mom and dad for money for the movies. I mean, those are options. There are a lot of options you can explore in, in a bank, not just counting money. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, it seems that our black kids uh, lack direction. And uh, for the parents who didn't have a chance to get education, uh, whatever the reasons are, we have to look towards other people to do those kind of things. And, and these people are called mentors, and Ms. Uh, Jacqueline Hopper has a, you think she would like to say about being the mentors? Thank you, Captain Hart. What we're going to ask the business leaders to do is to come out to the summit and support our youth by mentoring them for a day. Hopefully they can bring visual aids in which they will motivate our youth in order to go into the special area that they will focus on. Thank you, Ms. Hopper. Also, I'm going to be around the table here, the children know what a motivational speaker is. Okay. Well, a motivational speaker is your parent and our person who to talk to you, who tells you how to attain what it is you're trying to attain. Now, we have people who speak in large groups who are motivational speakers. These people <coughs> actually do this for a living. But all a motivational speaker is a person who gets you motivated, pushes you to attain success. And we have a motivational speaker with us today, uh, Mr. George Buck White. Mr. George Buck White, can you tell these children here something else about what you do? Very much so. My name is George Buck White, and I'm a, my name is George Buck White, and I'm a visitor from a neighboring county. And I was invited to this panel by Mr. Jim Rouse, Mr. Haley Johnson, and also Captain Hart. As a motivational speaker, I aspire to create or help create future leaders for all of our communities, all over Eastern North Carolina and, ever, and anywhere else we've seen. And as a bit of motivation, I can give you one very staunch uh, saying toward motivation. There are basically three types of people in the world. People who make things happen, people who watch things happen, and people who wonder what did happen. We as adults here today, we're going to try to do all we can to motivate you all and to create future leaders in our community, as I said again, all over the rural south. Uh, Mr. George Buck White, um, for the children you're here today, who has a son who is a uh, gym gymnast, is that correct? He's an inspiring Olympic gymnast. <coughs> he will be here. He will he would like to have been here today practicing for a very hard beat coming up soon and uh, he would, would really have liked to have been here to compete with y'all today or to, to have dialogue with y'all today. But he'll be at your next meeting, I promise. To speak for himself. I'm here representing him here today. Uh, uh, most of the time children, and I hope you don't mind me calling you children. Uh, don't realize exactly how much you impact upon your own life. And most sure people go to bed at night, get up every day thinking everything's going to come to them eventually. And it doesn't exactly happen that way. Uh, today is the best day of your life. If you put off saying, well, tomorrow those kind of things, it's just not going to happen. Uh, we were discussing a few minutes ago a, a possible uh, baseball player who was going to get a, a big contract and who made a uh, uh, go to college, and that is a big decision. And those are the kind of things you need to think about. You know, what to do, what should I do tomorrow? You should go to people for guidance, your guidance counselor, your mother, your father, your teachers, and those kind of things. I'm gonna turn it over here to Mr. Haywood Johnson right now, but again, I would like to say that the Greenwood Police Department is interested in the total community, not
not just policing the community. We cannot police anybody. It takes everybody. Mr. Haywood Johnson. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Captain Hardy. Uh, that was very well <coughs> said. It takes the entire village to raise a town. But our time has run out for this edition of the Minority Voice. So before we leave, we'd like for the camera to pan down on the end of the table. And as we pan around, we want each and every one of you to give your names. Okay, start with this. <coughs> My name is Baker Council. My name is Logan Council. My name is Sherry Bailey. My name is Brandy Apache. My name is Danielle Ryan. My name is Brother Haywood. <laughs> Captain Hardman, please. My name is Jessica Chum. My name is Ashley Hancock. My name is Captain Glow. My name is Julia May. My name is Toy Hall. My name is Violet Mills. Alright, well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Minority Voices. We thank you for tuning in, and remember, hang in there, because the best is still to come. So until next time, be good. Thank you. <laughs>